we're back here, and uh, I want to politely thank anybody that reminded me that we are getting close to the two-hour mark, and I understand that. And once again, I apologize because this is an intro class, and maybe I'm giving a little too much, but I just want to make sure that you guys get as much as you want or deserve. So let's talk a little bit about land use. Um, we're going to do very little about land use and developing and zoning. One is I've never developed um, I actually, that's a lie, I developed about nine condos, but the zoning was already in place, we, the building was already in place, we just bought it and redone them. Um, so, uh, zoning though is handed down from the states via the enabling acts to each municipality. So, make sure what you're doing is the correct zoning for your project or your investor. Um, especially if you're the buying or you're going to want to buy to do something. Um, you know, houses that may be uh, down there on Smith Valley Road that are houses that may be in a zoning uh, commercial, so somebody's buying the house because they're going to tear it down and, and build an office space. Well, you got to make sure you're checking the right zoning, and there is no state zoning laws. That's what I'm telling you about. It's municipality. You have to go to Greenwood, and Greenwood zoning may be slightly different than Bargersville, slightly different than Martinsville, slightly different than Bloomington, Indianapolis, Greenfield, all that. So make sure that you're looking for um, the, the municipality that you're in uh, to make sure you can do what you're going to do. And obviously the zoning uses, the categories of zoning that we have got, we've got ag, residential, commercial, industrial, and special use. Once again, commercial is defined to be office and retail and industrial is split out separately typically because of all the environmental issues. If you think back on the re retail section I told you if it's not industrial and commercial then it's retail. Well that's further tells you what I'm talking about because you've got commercial zoning and industrial zoning. Well commercial zoning is office, industrial is obviously office, What's left is the other part of the commercial, which is the retail zoning. Then you've got special use zoning. This is things that you might only see one or two of in an area like a golf course, uh, schools, churches, um, things like that, baseball diamonds. All right, now the most important thing you have to understand about when you're looking to develop and you're helping a uh, investor buy property to develop uh, is the zoning and the zoning permits but there are some other uses that can be in there. For instance, let's talk about non-conforming. A non-conforming use is a variance of the existing zoning ordinances permitting the use of land which wouldn't be allowed prior to the current, which was allowed prior to the current zoning. Got it? Clear. <laughs> okay, grandfather. Grandfathered in. Let me give you an example. For all you Southsiders, if you're not south side of Indianapolis, um, uh, hopefully this will make sense to you. Um, over on 31, on one side of the road, you've got the Walmart, you've got an Outback, you've got Hooters, um, <clears throat> International House of Pancakes, all the commercial stuff that you would expect on South US 31, which is a major north-south corridor for Indianapolis. On the west side of the road, what do you have? You have a bunch of houses or are they? Because they have been converted to offices. You have got small offices in there. You've got uh, res uh, real estate office. You've got a financial advisor's office. You've got a small doctor's office. There's a, an attorney. All of that. So it is, they changed the zoning to commercial. However, there is still a person that lives there in their house. So they appear to be the odd man out. But because they were there first, they are giving a non-conforming use permit. So they get to use the land in direct violation of the current zoning because it was allowed prior to the new zoning. Now it had to be legally there to begin with. All right. So what I'm saying is you can't say, um, you couldn't have had um, 
like an adult bookstore in there because that wouldn't have been allowed in the original zoning anyway. It was a violation and somebody was sneaking it in. Um, but let's say it was residential zoned, everybody lived there. Four of the five properties sold to, a, to doctors who made it a small clinic. The fifth guy is still a house. He looks like the odd man out, but because he was there first legally, he now gets to retain his use under a non-conforming use permit. Now, he gets to maintain that use as long as one of two things happen. One is he never sells outside of the old uh, use. So, in other words, he can sell it as a house, but he can't sell it as a doctor's office and then go back to the non... Because once he goes to the current use, it can't go back. Or his house doesn't get destroyed and not rebuilt, like, like by an act of God. If a tornado blows it down, he can rebuild it. But if he doesn't do it in a certain amount of time, then he loses the non-conforming use. That's one way. Now, you can also seek out what's called a conditional use permit. It's the design uh, to allow flexibility within the zoning laws. The zoning ordinance cannot account for every situation, so they have exceptions under this conditional use permits, which gives the authority the discretion to allow other prohibited uses in an area. So, for instance, um, commonly granted to commercial spaces or educational or religious inside of residential zones. All right, so you want to have a church inside a residence or um, a predominantly residential area. You're going to tear a house down and build a church. You may get a conditional use permit, okay? Um, Home-based businesses in residential neighborhoods, they would require a conditional use permit, okay? So if I want to open a haircutting parlor in my garage, and be a barber. Now the thing you have to understand about conditional use permit is it is a conditional use permit given to me to cut hair. I cannot say well that really stunk that business I'm gonna open another business and cut hair on dogs and call it a, a, a groomer and still you know can't use that conditional use because it was only granted for that specific use. I have to go seek a new one out. And if I sell the property that conditional use permit also goes away. I would The next person would have to reapply for it. A variance is a request to deviate from the current zoning. If granted, um, the owner gets to not eliminate but uh, manipulate. So the best one that I really like to give the example is what they call the setback zonings. Uh, you're not allowed to build your property so close to the property line, and there's reasons for that so you can get cars down it or emergency or build sidewalks out front. But let's say you want to build a garage on the end of your house and you're going to go right up to the edge of your property line. You may have to seek a variance of the setback standard. And the setback standard says that you cannot build a property within 10 feet of the property line. So you want to go to one foot within the property line. So you're going to go in front of the zoning board and seek a variance of that setback standard that's going to allow you to build up to one foot away. And then they will say yes, and you have to show a reason why and all that kind of stuff. All right? If you guys want to do anything more with uh, land use or zoning, that's fine. Um, if you've got questions, I can try and answer them. But I've never done any true, from the ground up, new home build development kind of stuff. All right? All right, hold on.